This is just my experience potty training as a mom to a mom, not as an expert. I want to know what, what you did and like what your methods were so that people can go in the comments and get other tips and tricks that are helpful. Maybe say like when you started your methodology and how it went. Hey guys, my name is Shayla and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, we talk about motherhood, we talk about pregnancy, we do things kind of hippie, kind of natural, kind of granola. If you're into that, please subscribe, please like the video. If you're not new here, welcome back. Please like the video. Today I'm not feeling better. If you watched my last week's video, it was just me being like, we're roughing it over here. I have an almost four year old and almost two year old and I am 21 weeks pregnant. I don't really see that much. I'm actually trying to hide that I'm wearing jeans on jeans because I just want to, you just need to see this jeans. You don't need to see these jeans. Plus maternity jeans are just so gnarly. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about potty training. Not as an expert, because I'm not, uh, but as a mom, like I said in the last video, if we were just going to sit down and have a cup of coffee and be like, so how'd you, how'd you potty train your kid? That's what this is. Take the nuggets that are going to work, leave the nuggets that don't. I also feel like I'm looking kind of like 90s with this like high pony and this jean jacket. It looks like I have a hickey on my neck. I have a birthmark on one side, so people always think I have a hickey. But I'm like, honestly, if I did right now, I'd be proud. Like, this is the one time in my life that I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna happily marriage with two small children and I'm gonna rock this hickey. Like I think if I saw another mom at preschool pick up with a hickey on her neck, I'd be like, I don't know, we're gonna just move on from that. But I'm gonna tell you some of the items that you might need to start. Kind of like what we followed. We've been doing cloth diapering and elimination communication. We do mostly cloth diapering. I'd say we do 80-20. So I'll use disposables at bedtime and I'll use disposables Sometimes when we're like going to be out for a long time and I don't want to like stuff them in wet bags I just want to have it disposable and then elimination communication. I was it's it's basically we potty train your infant I've got videos. I've got a ton of cloth diapering videos I have a whole playlist of like what are the different options? What are the pros and cons of those options then elimination communication? I also have a few videos and it's basically you potty train your infant from the start like some people are diehard Like I've gotten messages where people are like thank you for introducing me to elimination communication My 10 year old does it all the time and I'm like what or they do it through the night. I never did it through the night I think the biggest benefit to elimination communication is Getting them to not be afraid of the potty because a lot of times when you start to potty train the kids are like scared to sit on the potty. We loosely do it. I did a lot more with my first than I did with my second, mostly at transition time. So right away, first thing in the morning, for a nap, after nap, before we get in the car, after we get out of the car, after they eat a meal, like transition times. Cause biologically we don't want to sit in our own urine. There's a hormone that's released when you wake up to go potty, which is why a lot of us go first thing in the morning. We don't want to like sleep in our own urine. We don't want to sit in it while we're eating. So we hold it until like we're not going to be sitting. Transition times are big for practicing. We follow Go Diaper Free. She has a podcast, which is great. I've had her on my podcast. She's got books to talk about how to do elimination communication and how to potty train. She has this potty. I'm an affiliate with them, so there will be a link. So just go to heyshayla.com slash go diaper free. It'll take you to this website where you can get this potty. She like designed this because she found that this was like the easiest way. It's just one thing. There's not a bunch of like pieces high in the front so that they get, doesn't spill out. I don't know. I like this. And so we just have one of these and this is what we put them on. Anyway, this is the one that I like. The other one that I use once we started actually potty training is this guy because then I didn't have to dump out anything or wipe out anything. This, if you buy these, there's a hook that goes on the toilet which is super handy but you need to know this. These, this thing pops off. I'm hesitant to touch it even. Yeah, it's gross. Just know this thing comes off. Another thing you want are disinfectant wipes because potty training can get really dirty. This is real mom content for you. But if you didn't know that this thing never came off, I don't even want to put it on my desk, then you would never clean this thing and it would get really disgusting. And I'm going to wipe off my desk because I said I didn't want to set it on my desk and then I did. Oh, good golly. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing on this video right now. Okay, gross. Now you know. We were just visiting a friend who had like one that had had a step on it so like you'd put you put the seat on and then there was like a step for them to step up that's super nice and it folded up pretty compact so like it wasn't taking up a ton of space because we've got a stool and this thing and I feel like that helps to give them a little more independence we also got these which are their tiny under undies they're like organic cotton but you can't really tell very much but in here this little strip is like padded. There's extra padding in there. So as you're potty training, you can put them in these. If it gets wet, it doesn't just roll down their legs. Like 
it still might, but a lot of it gets caught in here. But sometimes they're gonna sit on the potty and you have to like read a book with them or like give them a mirror to look at or just chat with them. Or There's also a book, I'll put a screenshot of it. I was gonna grab it, but that's fine. We just read the book and we read it over and over and like we'd read it at bedtime and we'd read it while she was on the potty. And sometimes you have to distract them. I've also heard of like while they're on the potty having them blow like blow a candle. It's like when you give birth, right? You're relaxing the sphincter to relax the sphincters down there. Blow it into a straw. It's supposed to help relax everything. I never did that, but I thought that was interesting. I also pulled out a ton of burp rags. These are what I would use to clean things up. So let's get into the rest of it. Aaliyah probably took a month to figure it out. And my strategy, here's the content you're here for. I feel like there's a window of opportunity with potty training. And I really think it's between 12 and 24 months or even like 12 and 18 months. I'd say 18 months is probably typically the sweet spot, but every child's different and you're gonna know. Apparently some of the indicators are if your kid is going a long time without their diaper being wet. So they're having long dry times. That means that they can hold it. So that's a cue to you to be like, okay, it might be time to start trying to go on the potty. So I would start with transition times. When they wake up from their nap, try and put them on the potty, see if they go. My daughters were very different when we did this. So these tips that I'm giving you, if they do not work for your kid, try and find a different method. There's like the oh crap potty or something. Like, I don't know, it's like a three day method where you train them. I'm not really sure. I pulled up all the rugs so that it was only hardwood floors everywhere. And I let her go commando. I actually put her in these and just let her roll. We had a lot of accidents. It probably took a month and a half for her to like actually figure it out. What I realized when I started potty training Esme that is if she had anything on, and this could have been true for Aaliyah, but I didn't think of it. Undies, pants, anything, she would pee in them. So she had to go truly commando, no nothing. And I think that was a very direct cause and effect where instead of it getting kind of caught in the underwear, or kind of caught in the pants, it was like all over the place. So if you have carpets in your house, maybe get one of those green machines to clean it up. She would even like start to pee and then stop and be like, mom, putty. And then I'd have to bring her to the potty. The other thing is we have one bathroom in our house. So when we would go downstairs where there was no bathroom, I would bring this with us and I would just set it there so that if I could tell that she had to go potty or it seemed like it, or she decided sometimes I was upstairs one time and came downstairs and she was sitting on the potty going potty. And I was like, okay, fantastic. It took a very, very long time for them to say, I have to go potty. So I had to kind of figure it out. Okay, we go first thing in the morning and then we typically go like two hours after they wake up. And then we typically go here, like I kind of had to figure it out. I, I asked them, do you have to go potty? Do you have to go potty? And my girls, when they said no, they meant no. If I would try to put them on there, they would scream and yell and be super upset. When they didn't say anything, do you have to go potty? That was a yes. So I knew to bring them to the potty, they wouldn't protest, I would set them on the potty and they would pee. I kept being like, they're not potty trained, they haven't told me that they have to go. It took a super long time. For Aaliyah, for Esme, and this again, I think is their personality. For my second, she watched Aaliyah go potty, she watches me go potty, and she's very, very observant. She like shuts closet doors behind me and she puts things back in their places and she's very like orderly she did it in like a couple weeks and would tell me like it took only a, a month to like be consistently going on the potty and then like longer to tell me so they're totally different they were potty trained around the same age I want to say it was between like 18 to 20 months just know that probably not gonna be like I have to go potty but that you're gonna have to like pay attention and if you're like well my kids go to daycare how am I gonna do this just do it with your when you're with them at home they'll learn like oh at home we do this they are very very smart Andrea from go Dri diaper free said even with like elimination communication they're not doing it at daycare that's fine you can do it at home they'll figure it out like they just they just figure it out I never did any sort of like M&M reward sort of thing it was just like great you, you went potty and I never said like I'm so proud of you I always said can you say I did it and so now like when I go potty as you'll be like yay you did it yeah thank you I always try to do like that intrinsic you should be proud of yourself for doing this not because I'm like yay as you're so good you learn this so quickly you are making me so proud whatever so that was kind of how I complimented her. And somebody was like, oh, is she also potty trained at night? Absolutely not. Apparently that happens around like eight years old. Some kids, I know some kids who like wake their parents up to be like, I have to go potty. I'm like, honestly, right now, I would rather just do the diaper and not have you wake me up to go potty. Aaliyah does it sometimes. Apparently the pediatrician say that starts much later and I'm fine with that. So don't feel like if your kid's not doing it through the night that they're not potty trained. 
and maybe I'm wrong about that, but me personally, I'm like, nah, my kid's potty trained, but they still have a wet diaper in the morning sometimes, and sometimes they don't, but I also don't restrict their water intake close to bedtime. So that could also be a factor, but. So this is just my experience potty training as a mom to a mom, not as an expert. I wanna know what hot, what you did and like what your methods were so that people can go in the comments and get other tips and tricks that are helpful. Maybe say like when you started your methodology and how it went. Oh, coming up I have my biggest fears of having three because I have started to really get a little anxious about it. I didn't feel this way with two, but I'm feeling it a little bit with three. Uh, we're also headed to Hawaii in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna talk about probably my biggest fears with flying. No, I don't know, just just talking about the trip in anticipation. I'm gonna review my baby registry and a couple of things that I wish I had gotten then that I'm buying now and like swapping out like plates, different like plate options. At one point I had like three strollers and I was like, this is silly. So kind of reviewing that and what I would get now, which is super helpful for my sister because she's also pregnant and she is gonna have a baby shower and we're gonna do all the things and I'm like, I'm gonna just hook you up with this baby registry, sis. And then things that every parent needs to know before their baby's born. There are things that happen that you're like, is this normal? And it's like, yes. When your baby's born, they're going to drop in weight and then they're gonna pick it back up. That's like the whole goal. They need to get back to birth weight, I think before they leave the hospital, but just like stuff like that where you're like, is this normal? And then name videos, boy names, girl names. I like watching those, I like making those. So those are some things to look forward to. I hope this was helpful. I hope that the comments are helpful and I will see you guys next time.